Biodiesel is interesting to me because I live in Iowa. We produce a lot of the crops that the oil comes from. It's a great economic opportunity for small communities to be able to use some of the stuff that's grown locally to make a transportation fuel, create jobs, and decrease our dependence on foreign oil. I work for Indian Hills Community College and I'm the director of Iowa Biodevelopment. As a part of that, I'm tasked with training and education across the state for biotechnologies and bioprocessing. Biodiesel is basically the production of a diesel fuel from organic oil. Um, not oil from the ground, it's oil from plants. Oil from soybeans, from corn, from canola oil, from rapeseed. 90% of the biodiesel in the United States is made out of soybean oil. Here we are in a biodiesel plant just a few miles south of Crawfordsville, Iowa. Since it's not in operation right now, it's a great opportunity for us to walk through a real biodiesel plant and show you how biodiesel is produced from soybean oil. I'm standing next to one of this plant's um, storage containers where it holds the raw soybean, or the, the refined soybean oil that's used in the process of this plant to make biodiesel. This biodiesel plant produces 10 million gallons of biodiesel per year, so it needs to have considerable storage for the oil. And this is an example of one of the tanks that's stored in. We're standing outside the biodiesel plant and looking at the exterior tanks where they store some of the chemicals. The chemical on my right is a wet um, methanol tank. This comes off of the process and wet means that, that all the moisture hasn't been taken out of it, so it's not pure methanol, not ready to be used in the process yet. The tank to my left is a sodium methoxide mixture that's shipped to the tank and that's the catalyst for the process and it's stored in this tank. And then the white tank behind me, back here, is another methanol tank and that's the dry methanol tank and that's after all of the moisture has been removed and the methanol is pure methanol, it's stored in that tank, that's what's used over again in the process. The first step in the process is that the, the refined vegetable oil is pumped into this tank up here that preheats the oil. The oil is then pumped into one of these six reactor tanks or transesterification tanks um, along with the sodium methoxide. This is where the reaction takes place. This is where the oil is converted to biodiesel and glycerin. Okay, what we're gonna talk about first is we're gonna talk about the transesterification process. This takes place in the plant itself in the transesterification tanks, which we saw earlier, but we wanna show it here in the lab so you get an idea of what's going on inside those tanks. Um, remember when we talked about the transesterification is a mixture of the oil, which we have here, which is um, soybean oil, refined soybean oil, and the catalyst or the methoxide solution, which is methane and sodium hydroxide at this plant. So if we put about 25% of the catalyst and mix that with about 80% of the oil. Now the reaction that's taking place now is gonna is gonna convert the oil to a biodiesel and glycerin, but that reaction takes some time and it takes a little bit of heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a stir bar in here and we're gonna turn it on. And get it cranking up here. And we're going to give it a little bit of heat and we're going to let it sit here for a little bit and let the catalyst react with the oils. Once the reaction is complete and we have biodiesel and glycerin that's coming out of these six reactors, everything is pumped into what's called a primary uh, separator. This is an example of their primary separator. Everything is pumped in here. Since glycerin has a higher density than biodiesel, the glycerin sinks to the bottom, the biodiesel rises to the top. Biodiesel is sucked off the top and the glycerin is pulled off the bottom. The biodiesel that comes off the top ends up going into this, which is the secondary separator, and it has a raceway inside this big tank that pulls the glycerin out of the biodiesel. At this point now, the oil and the catalyst have been cooking basically in the batch reactors or the transesterification tanks for a period of time at about 60 degrees. In the plant now, where this goes, it goes into the primary separator. So what we're gonna do is simulate that 
is this uh, biodiesel um, catalyst mixture, which is now going to be biodiesel and glycerin, needs to go into a reactor. We're going to simulate that by putting it in a separatory funnel. Once it's in the separatory funnel, it sits and it will begin to separate. The glycerin will come to the bottom, biodiesel will rise to the top, and then we'll be able to separate it. And this is what happens in the separator, um, in both the primary and the secondary separator in the plant. Okay, what we have here now is the biodiesel on top and the glycerin layer down below. This is exactly what happens in the separator. Since the glycerin is more dense, it's at the bottom. They just open it up and it can drain on down. What we have then, after it's all done, is we have our glycerin in this jar, our biodiesel here. The biodiesel would now have to be washed before it could be used, but that's basically the process. The glycerin ends up going into this tank. The biodiesel ends up going into this tank. These two then get processed in different ways. The glycerin then goes through a process of distillation here to pull the methanol out of the glycerin. Remember, we still have methanol that's in the process. The methanol that's pulled out gets stored in the wet methanol tank outside. The biodiesel goes through the same process of distillation to pull the methanol out, and it gets stored also in the wet methanol tank outside. Once we have a good quality biodiesel and meets specs, there's still some contaminants in the biodiesel that need to be pulled out, and that process of removing those is called washing. Most biodiesel plants, or many biodiesel plants, use a wet wash, which is just water. This biodiesel plant was designed to be a dry wash system using Magnesol, which is a chemical that pulls those contaminants out. Once the biodiesel has been washed, it's basically ready for shipment, so it's pumped over into these tanks right here, these smaller ones on my right, and those are called the day tanks. The biodiesel is held in these tanks until the plant can confirm that it passes all the quality control specifications. If it passes, the biodiesel is then pumped into the big tank right here where it's held for loadout and shipment. If someone was interested in the biodiesel field or biofuels in general, it helps if they have some mechanical experience. Many people coming right out of high school, if they apply to local biodiesel or ethanol plants, may or may not get a job. But there are programs in the state, and we, are, we run one at Indian Hills called Agricultural and Biofuels Process Technology, designed to train um, students to, for careers in these areas, how they become a technician, entry-level jobs. They're two-year degrees. Um, they learn the process. They learn the science. They learn the mechanics behind biodiesel and ethanol production, and it just gives them a foot in the door. It gives that an edge up if they're interested in getting into these fields.